I know what baby me needs to learn about statistical physics. I can tell that you want to learn about statistical physics today. Will baby, will, 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 will baby wants to learn about the stats and how they move or how motion can be quantified into probabilities, I suppose. How do we measure and classify motion? This is a ball. A simple ball. It's a ball. This ball is on the left. We'll call it shit. So this ball right now is on the left side of this rectangle. Now it's on the move. So the ball is moving around on the left. And now the ball is on the right. Oh my god, it's me. That's crazy. I never knew I would have so much in common with a red ball. So the ball decided to move and now it's on the right side of the rectangle. Now, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six balls. Let's count them. One, two, three balls on the left. One, two, three balls on the right. So that means we have six balls on the rectangle. These balls are all on the move. So this one's going that way, 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 and this one's going that way. They're organically moving around, trying to figure out their position on the rectangle. Sometimes there are more on the left, so we have one ball on the right and five on the left. And sometimes there are more on the right. Sometimes there are more on the right. So we have one ball here. One, two, three, four, five balls on the right. Rarely are they all on the same side. Very rare to find them all on the same side of the rectangle. We usually find them like this. Three on this side or three on that side. All of them moving in different directions. Now each ball is a different color. So we have, can you tell me what color this is? Very good. And can you tell me what color this is? Very good. Can you tell me what color this is? Very good. And can you tell me what color this is? Very good. Can you tell me what color this is? Very good. Can you tell me what color this is? Very good. So we have six different colors for six different balls, and each ball is a different color. There is only one way for all the balls to be on the left. So all of the multicolored balls right now are on the left side of the rectangle. But there is only one way for them to be on that side. There are six ways for one ball to be on the right. So, we have six rectangles, two, three, four, five, six, and each one has a ball on the right, just one ball on the right. So we have a red ball there, a yellow ball there, a blue ball there, a purple ball there, green, and orange ball up there. Now, there are 15 ways for two balls to be on the right. So now we have 15 different ways to find two balls on the right, whether it be a combination of red and orange, red and purple, blue and purple, let's see, green and blue, purple and green, green and yellow, orange and yellow, red and yellow, etc, etc, etc. Ooh, big page. There are 20 ways for three balls to be on each side. 
So now we have this entire map showing us all of the ways that we can find rectangles with three balls on each side. That is why we see this more often. So let's recap very quickly. So, there is only one way for all the balls to be on the left. Why? Can you answer me that? Because if all the balls are on the left, there's no other way for there to be a difference. All six of these multicolored balls are on the left. That's only one way. Now, there are six ways for one ball to be on the right. So, what does that mean? Can you tell me why there's only six ways for one ball to be on the right? Very good. It's because of all the multicolored balls, without repeating the same color, because then it would just be the same answer, you can only have six ways for there to be one ball on the right. If you have red on the right, if you have yellow, if you have blue on the right, if you have purple, green, and orange, you've used up all the colors. So unless you want to add a seventh rectangle, you'll just be repeating one of the answers. And once again, that would mean that there's only six possibilities. So there's only six ways in which there could be one ball on the right. So you take that logic and you apply it to this now. There are 15 ways for two balls to be on the right. So we're nearing the middle point before we start to decrease on the right, on the left. So then there would be one ball, or rather, yeah, one ball on the right, and we would just start to replicate this map, but in reverse. However, there are 15 ways for two balls to be on the right. So any combination of two balls could be on the right, but it's only a finite amount of combinations that can be on the right of two colors, and that is 15. Among six options, you only have 15 ways that you can combine them. And finally, the most options you have when you split it down the middle are 20 different ways in which you can combine and recombine three colors on each side. But more specifically on the right, since we've been addressing the right side the entire time. So, because there are so many options of combinations for three different colors to be put on the right, you're going to have the most options here, thus it's going to be the most common or probable answer when you're picking out some combination. So let's say that we put 20 of these rectangles onto a slip of paper, 20 different slips of paper. That's why we put 15 of these images onto 15 slips of paper. And let's say we put this onto six slips of paper. And let's say that we put this option on one slip of paper. And we put all of those papers into a jar. And you were to reach your hand into the jar and pick out an option. It is most likely that you are going to choose this one. That's why you see it the most often. Physicists call the number of different combinations entropy. So all of these different types of combinations is called entropy. Here, when we have all of the options only on one side, thus giving us only one option, one slip of paper, one possibility, you have low entropy. When you have multiple combinations, multiple possibilities, a more common or a more frequent um, combination, that is high entropy. There's more possibilities. Even if all the balls start on one side, they end up here because it is much more likely. This possibility does not sustain itself for long because if they continue to move, it's a lot more probable that they're going to start sprawling out 
across the full space that they have for why would they stay just about here if there's nothing blocking them. Things move from low entropy to high entropy. This is the second law of thermodynamics. So if all of them were on one side, giving us one combination, one possibility, then that would be low entropy. They would then move up to high entropy where then you would get the most common probability, the most common answer, the most common pos possibility, I already said that, where they're all sprawled out and more filling up the space basically. But in order to move from high entropy to low entropy, you must add effort and energy. That's how you keep them in place. If you want to have low entropy, you have to force them into one side of the rectangle. Force them into place. Why? Because things naturally, naturally, go from organized to messy. So in order to have low entropy, you're going to have to force them into order. But if you are more commonly going to have high entropy, that's going to release more chaos as they start to sprawl out and make use of the full space. Now you know statistical physics. And what did baby learn today? Yeah. Unless you are motivated and constantly have your eye on the ball, your life can get very disorganized, very quickly. It's so true. It's so true. C'est la vie, little bébé. So, I'm going to go find you some mashed potatoes and gravy baby formula. I think you might enjoy that. Give me one moment. Infant. <laughs>